drought of mystery do. We know it's either your groin or your knee. We thought it was maybe explosive you know what in game two because you had to leave, come back in, leave, come back in. Yeah. But no, it, it's some sort of injury and I'm so tired of this. Well, we, we can't say what kind of injury it is. Come on. Like, why don't we have full transparency like it has well, to be you know the why, NIL? Because, because right, guys will try come and come on. They know on the ice, Dean, what part's hurting. Come on. They don't know. No, they don't. They and can't you know, see him favoring a side. That goal that, that host has scored, that, that shouldn't have been a goal. And it was in game one or game two? Maybe it was in game two. Was it game two? Game one. What game did they win? Game one. Uh, where he stuck his, uh, his, his, his stick underneath the pad. That was the leg. Yeah. So everybody knows. I mean, everybody already knows. Yeah. But it was the. You know what it was? It was the. Ah, my shit. Oh, my leg. My groin. Okay. Hey, you never did that. You know who, who would be cut for 15 stitches, be missing 14, throw a water bottle, spit the blood in the tooth out, and keep going, and tell the NHL to wake up. Yeah. Our next guest, Jeremy Ronick. Jeremy Ronick joins us. Hey, man. How are you? Good morning. How are you doing? Uh, good. Uh, I, I, I. We're just talking about Ben Bishop last night. Um. I got, I, I don't know, you played with a million injuries. Like, someone could cut your arm off and you'd still try and do something with the stump. <laughs> well, I, you know, I tried to, I tried to do things that, my, that other people would do, and I think they tested myself, and I gave as much as I could for, uh, for the team, and, and to win a hockey game, and, you know, I, I, I didn't mind the pain. I, pain, pain always goes away. It's, it's not how people are going to remember you that's going to stick around. Pain doesn't, so I, I never mind, mind that. Could you could you maybe have a chat with Ben Bishop then so he doesn't continue to tell us he's injured after every save? Uh, yeah, <laughs> yeah I, 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 I'm getting a little... I just, I'm, I'm not paying attention to it as much as everybody else is because it seems to be the first question that everybody asks and it seems to be the, the main topic um, in the Stanley Cup Finals that it should, it should be. Um, you can't play you can't play a whole a whole game like that and, and be a goaltender uh, if you're really injured. So uh, I, I would have to think it's, it's probably a, a, a slight injury, maybe a minor tweak or something like that that you can maybe uh, freeze up or or take some take some time out to make the, the, the all the pain. But uh, you know you, you can't have a performance like that if you're if you're really hurt. So you know I, I think everybody should stop talking about it and continue to uh, continue to play. And talk about the good things like Victor Hedman. How terrific was he yesterday? He's been he has been absolutely spectacular the whole playoffs and then even the whole year. I think he's he's made the biggest jump, uh, the biggest leap to the, the top of the talent chain. Um, of any position, I think this year uh, he's been uh, he's been with the best he has been for Chicago. He's been uh, absolutely spectacular. Uh, Chair, well, we talk about him, but what about Anton Strawman as well? Is he the uh, is he the unsung hero of that Tampa Bay Blue Line? <laughs> yeah, unfortunately, you know he's like John Wilson. I guess he's like John Wilson. Nobody talks about John Wilson because of Seabrook and Keith. There was no talk about Strawman because of Hedman, and, and Strawman does all the dirty work. He he literally sits there and blocks the shots and, and you know does all the little things that you need a solid stay at home defenseman to do. And uh, he's been rewarded with some power play time, and he you know he, he can tell that he he is a smart. Smart hockey player. Mm. He does the he does the proper things. He's the one that's trusted the most by by John Cooper. Um, just just a just a really solid solid um, dependable defense that been fantastic. Uh, Jerry, we've been talking about how the Chicago Blackhawks how did they win this series with only four defensemen. We saw Johnny Oduya get hurt yesterday. Was that a dirty play by Kucherov? Was that a sloop up? Uh, you know, when, when you're in that position, I think in that position, it's kind of instinctive to try to get the, you know, get the inside edge or get the best of somebody. Um, whether you're trying to do it or not, I think it was a little dirty, but, um, you know, it's just going to be interesting to see how, how Johnny, uh, you know, I think comes back on Wednesday. Uh, he looked a little bit, a little, a little sore and, and gingerly, so. But no, I'm sure it's, it's game four now. I think he'll find a way to get get it done. But it was kind of a kind of cheap shot. Uh, Jeremy Roddick, analyst for the NHL on uh, NBC, former uh, NHLer as well. Uh, did, did you take Chicago like everybody else did before the series started, and not because you're you're, you're a former uh, Blackhawk? Uh, I did. I just liked. I mean, I like their experience. I'm, I'm always going to go with experience first. I like their I like the depth on their on their forward lines. Um, I didn't expect. Uh, Kane to go pointless. I didn't expect uh, Taze to get have one point so far, but I, I, I'm still sticking with them. I picked them in six. Uh, I mean, you saw the 
Hawks are down 2-1 in the last series against Anaheim. So they've been in this position before, and, and they know how to battle. Uh, it's just, with, with me, I wonder how much the, uh, the the pain and the injuries and how long they've been in the playoffs is going to take effect, whether the fatigue is going to is going to allow them to come back in this one because Tampa just seems to be rolling along. You know, what are they doing to uh, Chicago to negate uh, Taves specifically? Because uh, you made mention of it. He's been not invisible uh, defensively. Offensively, though, he's gone missing. Well, they're, they're being hard on the puck and being hard on them. So as soon as they get the puck, there's a body on them, and they don't give them much time to make that, to make that smart puck past it's time and space and they're making sure that they're that they are on their toes that they're setting their key cuts up in the neutral zone not let them uh, gain as much momentum or speed to the neutral zone and, and they're just really strong i mean they're, they're, just, they're being hard on pucks and hard on bodies uh, and they're doing it as a as a whole it's not just one person uh, they're taking the responsibility as a team to, to do it um, individually 